go inside the presentation, in which case is correct. But yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, so yeah, uh, my name's Anthony. Um, I'm going to give a talk on Gatsby, um, and I'll just dive straight in. So a little bit about who I am. Um, I come from a very non-JavaScript background, um, very distributed systems, um, architecture oriented. Um, as I said, I've, I've done Clojure for like five years. Um, that's my bread and butter. Um, I've recently done a lot of machine learning kind of integration, a lot of infrastructure training over the last six years, um, engineering management startups, like the whole gamut, and I basically haven't done much JavaScript or an almost no front-end um, development whatsoever. So uh, prepare as I give a talk about a front-end JavaScript framework. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gatsby, um, of which I'm a, a contractor at right now. Um, and I didn't buy the shirt or anything like that, they gave it to me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Swag. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, just an introduction to what Gatsby is. Um, talk about how Gatsby solves a lot of data sourcing problems. Um, how it does a lot of performance optimizations, which is something that Gatsby is very well known for. Um, and then if we get some time, which I think we should, um, or we'll do a bit of a demo at the end. Uh, so, what is Gatsby? I think the creator of Gatsby, uh, Kyle, um, puts it best. Um, it's basically a web compiler. It takes your high-level language, React components, uh, compiles it into the fastest possible website. Um, so if we break that down a little bit, um, we've got, it's a React framework. Um, it's very much focused on React, um, and it produces those static assets, the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And it's essentially just a build tool when it really comes down to it, um, just to get some context around it. Um, you, as a site author, write GraphQL queries, and don't worry if you don't know what that is, I'll get to that later on. Um, and this describes where you want your data to come from. Could be WordPress, could be Contentful, could be files on disk, could be wherever you want it to come from. Um, you obviously write React components to do the UI. Um, there's no manual HTML, CSS like that. This is entirely React-based. Uh, you run the build tool, uh, and it produces all those type of assets, which are highly optimized for performance. Um, and just to like, get things off, like a lot of sites are built in Gatsby. If you're building React and you want to build some kind of static -y site or a dynamic site that has a lot of static nature to it, um, then Gatsby is, is becoming kind of the way that you do it. Um, so the React website itself is built in Gatsby. Um, there's a lot of e-commerce sites which are adopting it. Um, Airbnb's engineering blog is using it. Um, Easy Agile's using it. Easy Agile's using it. I forgot about that. Yeah. Glowing recommendation. Glowing. <laughs> Um, so, and then just, you know, it's very hyped. It's got 28,000 stars on GitHub, which I think is a fifth of React itself. Um, it's got heaps of plugins, got over 1,400 contributors, um, and it's open source. So it's not going anywhere that raised a heap of venture funding. Um, so it's, it's safe and it's popular. So yeah. Um, so data sourcing is one of the biggest areas uh, that Gatsby kind of really shines in my mind. Um, so. Go back in history a little bit, uh, think about how we used to build websites, or you still do in many respects. Um, it's probably the CMS, it's probably with WordPress or something like that, assuming you have kind of live dynamic data that you need to actually change on your site. Um, these CMSs are jacks of all trades. You know, you can build a website that does, you know, pretty much anything within reason, but it's never really very good at one particular thing. Um, Plugins go to some extent to change that, um, but they, you know, it's always just a plugin, you know, for this kind of giant CMS. Um, Server-side rendering is slow. Um, you know, we forget these, this, but you know, you have to have a request go back to a server. It has to generate HTML and then it has to come back to your um, back to the uh, front end. Um, they're hard to scale. You've got servers, you've got databases. You have to think about all that and how you're actually going to scale your site. Um, slow to innovate, just historically, um, kind of the older a CMS gets, um, the slower it is to innovate. Um, servers are costly, you know, you have to run an entire server to host a website. Um, uh, and then also, we've all seen this, but script kiddies love um, CMSs and, you know, they will try and hack the crap out of you. Um, so, what happens instead is we have uh, services which try and kind of zero in on these specific use cases inside your site. Um, we're probably all using a lot of these, um, you know, payments, uh, search, custom support, like a whole bunch of things these days are actually just third-party services, which you're either injecting JavaScript into your site or you're using at a service level. Um, and what you really end up with is, you know, you look at a standard site these days and it's, you know, very little of that content is really coming from your back-end CMS. It's, it's usually coming from, you know, somewhere else on the internet. Um, now, this results in amazing user experiences, um, things that you can't really do with a traditional CMS. Um, but, 
that's a lot of JavaScript to load onto your site. And if you're doing it just in the bare bones approach where you're just importing everything, and even gzipping doesn't really help that much. Um, and so it's slow. Loading, downloading that JavaScript takes a long time. Um, another problem is that each of these services has very different APIs. You know, they might all be talking REST, but then like the knowledge clerk inside the, the REST API, um, whether they do timeouts in the same way, there, there's like very, very small things that are very different between all of these sites. And it makes getting a grip on that quite difficult. Um, and so Gatsby is introducing this kind of term, um, the content mesh, which is you know, the submission that most of our data is now living in other places on the internet, and we've got to kind of source it all onto our site. Um, and so that's what it's going to try and, and uh, solve for you <clears throat> and make it super fast at the same time. So enter GraphQL. Um, show of hands, who's heard of GraphQL? Cool. Who's used GraphQL? Awesome. Who knows that GraphQL can be used as a function? It doesn't mean it can be used as a service. <laughs> um, so that's, that's <laughs> um, so yeah. So basically, GraphQL it's fundamentally just a schema and query language. Um, it's just a specification. There's no code behind it. Um, it's a published spec. Um, database agnostic. So this language isn't tied to a particular database or anything like that. In theory, any data source, service, database, files, whatever, could be hooked in um, into it. That does mean that you have to write a whole bunch of glue code um, to essentially uh, connect that schema and query language to your underlying data source or data sources. But the benefit if, of that is that you can have one kind of query language in which all your data sources can kind of feed off. Um, and that, that's, that's a big deal. The, uh, the other nice thing about it is that the clients specify the data that they want returned in the query. If you've ever built a REST API, you know, for a desktop client, and then mobile, you know, guys would come along and said, "Hey, we want less data because you know you're like we've got to download a meg of stuff." Um, then you have to build like a separate, you know, API that is like you know slash short or something like that. You know, a lot of us have been here. GraphQL eliminates that because in the request itself, you specify exactly the data that you want, um, so it's extremely flexible. Um, uh, and as I mentioned, GraphQL can be used as a function, um, which is something to, to keep in mind as we go forward. Um, so here is an example of a GraphQL query. Uh, it's in this case we're asking for the, the markdown remark query, um, whatever that is, uh, and then we've got a filter up the top there saying yeah, I've got a point here, don't I? yes. Um, so we're going to say uh, we're going to select where front matter path is equal to you know, the string. Um, assuming we get uh, one or more records back, um, then in each of those records we're going to ask for front matter dot title, we're going to ask for the time to read, we're going to ask for the headings dot value. There are potentially thousands more fields that you could query here according to the scheme that, that you set up. Um, but this kind of is what the query looks like. And then the response, it exactly mirrors this kind of request um, that, you, that you've asked for. Um, so we can see here that we've, you know, we've got a, oh, I can't select that, that's an image. <laughs> we've got a, a front matter dot title, we've got time to read, and we've got a whole bunch of headings. Um, so it's very declarative, um, you know, fairly simple, I would say, um, and you know, fairly easy to. Um, so anyway, how does Gatsby use this? Uh, so as I mentioned, Gatsby is a build tool. Right? You run it, um, it, it's going to pull in a whole lot of data and produce a whole website. So what happens there? Um, and remember, this is just a build time. We're going to load data from all of our data sources, and this happens from our Gatsby plugins, uh, which I mentioned there are, there are hundreds of those right now, but you can pull in data from pretty much anywhere you want these days. And if you've got a custom database uh, that no one else has written a plugin for, then you can build your own plugin for it. It's, it's fairly easy to do. Um, so it's literally gonna go and just grab all the data from file, from, um, from databases, from whatever. Um, once it's got all that data in memory, uh, it's going to start inferring a GraphQL schema from that data. The way it's doing this, it's literally creating example values, objects, and saying that's a string, that's an int, that's a sub-object, that's got an array, of strings and that's got objects as well and it'll build out this, this kind of very large um, schema for you so you don't have to write it by hand. And the code for this takes up about a third of Gatsby's code base. It's, it's quite complex. Um, next thing we're going to do is you will have written a whole bunch of queries in your code um, for all the different pages on your site and it's going to go and run all of those and dump the contents to disk. To disk. Um, so we're a build tool. Um, what uh, Gatsby uses is Webpack to essentially take in all of the um, all of your code and essentially pr uh, produce all the HTML and CSS. As part of that, it's going to be referencing those query results. Um, but importantly, 
once it actually gets into the browser, uh, we call React Hydrate. And what that does is essentially convert it from pure HTML or JavaScript um, into a live running JavaScript version. So the DOM has kind of taken over um, that pure HTML at the center. Um, this is important because now if you did have any dynamic content on your pages, they can start running. Um, as part of this, uh, they will actually be, if you go to another page, for instance, then now we'll go back to uh, your CDN or whatever you've got your, um, your assets set up, and it will go and grab all those query results that were actually you know, written to disk during the build phase, which I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, right, so anyway, that's the data sourcing part. It's a big part of Gatsby that I'm, I'm it's one of the reasons that I'm very excited about it. Um, but what most people know about Gatsby is that it just makes really performance sites. Um, so we've got to remind ourselves that performance is important because a lot of people you know, forget this and there are a ton of statistics out there. Um, this one, uh, this is from a big study that Google did, that 53% of visits are abandoned for mobile site takes longer than three seconds to load. And there's a lot of mobile sites that take longer than three seconds to load. Um, like it's kind of worse than I thought it would be, honestly. Like I, I would have thought people would hang around, but 53% is a fair bit. Um, when talking directly about revenue, um, uh, this one's one of my favorites. For every 100 millisecond decrease in um, load speed, um, Mobify, whatever they are, um, <laughs> saw a 1% lift in, in conversion. Like that directly affects revenue. Um, so if you can get your site, for every 100 milliseconds of you know, performance you can gain, that's, that's instant money essentially for your business, shouldn't you're trying to make money. Um, so the problem is, performance is hard. I mean, you know, people laugh at this, they say, oh, just build a simple HTML, CSS site. It's like, well, great, but there's a lot of stuff I want to do in my site. And every time you have one of those libraries and more functionality, um, you're just going to see that explode, um, specifically on the first page load. Um, so, uh, here's some of the stuff that Gatsby does. And there's, there's a lot of good stuff here, I'm just gonna burn through it. Um, you can ask questions about it later if you want. Um, so, one of the biggest ones is route-based code splitting. Um, so code splitting is where you've got a whole bunch of code, um, but the fact is that a lot of it doesn't need to run on that first page load. If they go to another page, then you might want to load that stuff. Now, if you're hand crafting a site, you can do this yourself, um, but it is fraught with you know, um, errors. It's, it's quite hard to automate all of that stuff. And so this is one of the things that Catsby does for you. Um, behind the scenes, it's basically just doing something like this. It's just you know printing out names of components and then it's got live code that just calls that import, which is what we've had the users to figure out that it should code split that particular module off. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need to know that, that's just like, you know, shows you like some of the stuff that Gatsby's doing in the very internals of it. Um, and you end up with essentially this, like this middle column here is the kind of first page load. It's, it's you know, your main bundle. And then in your other pages, you know, you'll have just the assets, uh, JavaScript and CSS that you actually need um, for those pages. Uh, and Gatsby uh, is able to figure out like what a page is uh, very easily. It's very declarative in that way. Um, so you get all this, this is all this happening for free. Um, we can serve assets with HTTP2. Um, so we get multiplex downloads. Um, the server can actually uh, push information to the browser. There's a lot of cool stuff that can happen here. Um, asset prefetching is, is a fun one. So we know what links are on your page. There's actually Gatsby specific, specific link um, uh, components that you can use. Um, and what this means is that, yeah, we know that as soon as this page loads, there's a chance that all these other links, you, you might be clicking on them. Um, or for instance, if you uh, hover over a button, then we can start prefetching that page like immediately as well. The result of this, that for the vast majority of clicks on a page, that page will load instantly. And this is where we're getting into the realm of like, you know, oh, but HTML and CSS is just fast enough. And it's like, well, no, you can't do this with that. Like you need JavaScript in there. Um, and so like Gatsby will actually kind of like, it, it loads up a JavaScript app that is essentially a loader app that's running as soon as the, the initial page load has occurred. And that will do all of this stuff for you. Um, we can lazy load assets. Um, so uh, we can prevent those images from blocking your first render. Um, and uh, another thing is we only request the images that are actually inside the viewport. And you might, if you're a front-end programmer, you might be saying like, what about the janky image reloading where you, know, you get this kind of, you know, uh, you know the, the image like just loaded now the whole DOM has been pushed down and uh, And obviously there's a lot of uh, solutions to this and you know, Gatsby has them out of the box. So on the left here, we've just got the default, um, you know, we know the, the sizes of your images and so we just create placeholders for them. But you can get really fancy here. Uh, you can have SVG um, image, uh, versions of the image that are done ahead of time. You can do blurred images. Um, 
it, there's like so many plugins for this and all you have to do is add a line to your Gatsby config, wait maybe an extra you know, second or two in the build time because it's got to now build more images. Um, but then it will just like do all of this stuff for free. Um, so you can have that you know, beautiful you know, medium um, you know, page loading, uh, image loading effect um, yeah, in your sites. Uh, and it's faster. Uh, service workers, so we can cache critical assets uh, when they're first installed. Um, you know, same for non-critical assets. Um, a, a result of this is that all Gatsby sites are progressive web apps, uh, or can be, if you want them to be. Um, and there's also a plugin uh, called Gatsby Offline, which, cool, your site is now completely offline. Like, it's just a one-line config. Um, when this was first introduced, there were a few bugs around service workers, but I assure you, that <laughs> it should all be like ironed out <laughs> for anyone who's got fear of that. Um, and then there's the, all the usual web app kind of um, tree shaping stuff uh, that we do for you. Um, you know, we, we lean heavily on Webpack for a lot of that stuff. And the configuration that we've built up in Gatsby, it's, it's all built dynamically at build time. Uh, it's crazy. Um, there's a lot going on there. Um, fundamentally, you know, this is always going to be the big one. Uh, we're only serving, serving static assets. There's no server um, here. That, that, you know, hit back to the server, render a whole new HTML payload, go back to the browser, like that's gone. Instead, you've got assets which are hosted on CDNs, uh, which are very, very close to you uh, and probably <coughs> cached. Um, yeah, so cacheability and, oh yeah, no servers tap into as well. That's really nice. Um, it's also really cheap. Like, you know, hosting a Gatsby site is, is insanely cheap. Uh, most people, if they go from a server, you know, to running on a CDN, like they're gonna cut their costs by 100 or so. Um, so yeah, anyway, if you use something like Lighthouse, um, you yeah, know, this is the, I think this is, yeah, this is reactjs.org. Um, and, uh, you know, by de this is the thing about uh, Gatsby, by default, you will get a fast site. If you just build your site, you know, as Gatsby wants you to, um, then you'll get this metric. I don't know what's going on with the PWA there. I, <laughs> I didn't look into it. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, you can try, I mean, if you want to go and, you know, start writing a lot of like, you know, custom code that um, kind of is outside the realm of Gatsby, then you can certainly, you know, degrade the performance of your site. But the important thing is that all the kind of default decisions that a developer will make using Gatsby will be the right <coughs> um, it, it kind of forces you in the right direction. Uh, so anyway, performance is hard. You could do it all of yourself. Um, there's a lot uh, of stuff to, to make a highly performant website, um, but the documentation is all out there and you can find it. And there's a lot of good blog posts about it. Um, but you know, Gatsby does it for you for free, so yeah, how to use it. Um, so anyway, uh, that's the talk, and I want to jump in and just give you a feel for what a Gatsby site feels like at, at the code level. Uh, so let's jump into Emacs. All right, cool. Yeah, so everyone can read that. Um, so uh, yeah, anyway, it's it's a Node.js application. This is our package.json. Um, so every time you want to add a Gatsby plugin, you just add it to um, you know, via Yarn or NPM or whatever. Um, the next step is to create a Gatsby config file. Um, it's it's just a configuration file as you'd expect. Um, but you know here we're we're telling that we want uh, you know, we want to allow our site to be offline. Um, we want to source uh, data from the file system um, you know, in this directory. <coughs> um, uh, same thing for this one, except it's Markdown documents. Um, Plugin Sharp is an image um, optimization library that um, Gatsby uses. Uh, inside, like, a lot of people use Gatsby for blogs, and that's all Markdown kind of stuff. And so there's a ton of like sub plugins that only apply to the Markdown phase of Gatsby. Um, so yeah, that's where you can do like you can do images, uh, graph divs, auto linking headers, Prism JS. Like there, there's there's a plugin for anything that you want in the Markdown world. Um, anyway, so that's the kind of thing that a, uh, a config looks like assuming you want all that stuff. Um, the next step would be to write your pages. So here's the index. Um, you know, it's, it's as you'd expect. It's, it's a React component um, that you've exported. Um, yeah, there's really not much else there. Uh, the more interesting one is something like a, a template. Um, so say we've got a, we're gonna pull in all those markdown pages, but we wanna apply one React component to all of them. Um, so that would look something like this. So, you know, the component, well, first of all, we've got our, our query down here. So this is a GraphQL query. Um, we're going to be handed a, a path, which I won't get into how that happens, but um, you can set that up earlier. Uh, and then we're gonna ask for markdown remark, uh, where, you know, the fields.slug is equal to that path. And we're going to return the HTML and the front matter title. 
before this has happened, when we've sourced all that markdown um, information, we've already parsed all of it. That's what the plugins are doing. You know, they're parsing through, they're returning the HTML, all the front matter information. Um, that's all here. Um, any other plugins can add whatever other fields they want to this query, to this um, GraphQL query. Um, so the result of that is that it's passed in uh, via props, um, and, and we have it here. It's, uh, you know, we've destructured the information that we really want from that query result, and then we've, you know, written out our React component as normal. Um, so it's, it's nothing super crazy. The craziest it gets is that, you know, we can parse the actual JavaScript file looking for that GraphQL tag so that we can run ahead of time. But beyond that, you just write in JavaScript code. Um, it's, it's extremely extensible in that regard. Uh, so, and then, uh, you know, I've decided to put my markdown documents in, in this area. Uh, a little bit of closure there. It's nice. <laughs> um, anyway, so that, you know, you have all your markdown here somewhere. Um, so anyway, so to run it, All right, so I'm in that directory right now, and I'm just going to run a Gatsby build. So it's going to source all the information, it's going to create the schema, run all the queries and so on, um, and then you know we're done, and we've essentially now just got a, a lot of information in, in public. Like this is all the, the stuff that's generated for you um, as part of Webpack and, and all the other stuff we're doing. Um, has a convenient, um, you, you would normally go and put this on a CDN or on Network Fire or something like that. Um, but it also just has a convenient little serve. Um, so it's going to run it up on port 9000. And if we go to our site. Cool. So now, yeah, this is as you expect, it's, it's just the site running. Um, the, one other thing I'll show you is just the Uh, is develop mode. Um, Gatsby has uh, very good documentation um, compared to most projects. Um, it's there's a lot of it, uh, but they focus very heavily on the on the develop, developer experience. Um, an example of that is just Gatsby develop, which is you know basically like Yarn start or hop, ro hop reloading, all that kind of thing. Um, but the benefit is that all of those plugins that you've set up, like all of that stuff, is going to be run as well. And so if I go back to my um, markdown file. Uh, and then we go and load this up on the develop port. Uh, just gives you a sense of like just kind of how fast the um, the updates are here. Uh, and this applies, you know, I've got my graph is kind of um, uh, graph modeling here, and even that, you know, is uploading kind of instantly. Um, so I, can, I wrote a lot of the Gatsby documentation in Gatsby, and I can say it's one of the like nicest document writing experiences I've ever had. Um, you don't have to like think about this is just markdown. I've got to worry about what it's going to look like later. Like everything that you want to possibly configure is live uh, right there. Um, yeah, I think that's that's about it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>
The problem is that it is a single threaded Node.js application and trying to build the entire Walmart.com site on, you know, even if it's a you know, 32 core server, um, it's a single threaded node application. Um, so I can't do it right now. Um, where we're going is to move it essentially into a you know, cloud native kind of world um, where it, you start a build and it incrementally uh, builds and it also does it in parallel across an entire cluster. And now you can build any site you want um, purely statically. Um, so that's, that's where the business model is eventually going to be. And, and it's an enterprise platform. model and you've got to pay for it. And... Yeah, exactly. What competitors exist out there against Gatsby? Like, who, who are they? Like, who are they positioning themselves against this question? So there's there's a lot of static site generators, um, but none of them, uh, like Jekyll and Hugo, um, they've got a lot of plugins out there, but they don't have as much of the kind of complete package that Gatsby has. Um, Next.js is is interesting, but it's definitely more focused on a purely dynamic um, kind of site. It doesn't really nail the static thing as much. Um, we have seen a few people who are attacking the GraphQL piece. Um, that content mesh thing, uh, in my opinion, is, is the bigger part of this. Um, uh, and, and the fact is that more and more services are, more and more sites are pu purely using services for that. So we've seen a few, you know, schema inference um, kind of sites starting up. But we still haven't really seen anyone who's got the whole thing yet. Uh, but I imagine it will come. Yeah. So they see themselves kind of feeding high in kind of an indirect way? Uh, totally, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, Medium would presumably use, I mean, it would, it's still a tool at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, as in terms of instead of, you know, hosting like their own build process, then hopefully Medium would use something like Gatsby. Um, we've also got, I mean, you know, React has, you know, thousands of pages of documentation. Um, Free Code Camp is built with Gatsby. Um, so anything where you've got like a ton of pages, I think like the New York Times would be like a great kind of you know potential customer. Um, it, yeah, that that data doesn't change, um, so yeah, <laughs> or it shouldn't change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are the uh, entrance cost? I mean, in uh, in effort. So let's say there is a news website for I don't know WordPress, WordPress for example, some cache is lacking. Yeah. Um, what? Step by step, what it needs to be done. It is basically, is there a way to somehow migrate rather than recreate it? Um, so, I mean, if your entire site you know, is in WordPress, then I don't think there'd be a way to do it, I mean, an easy one step migration. Um, but you, one thing you can do is keep your data model on WordPress, and there's a WordPress uh, data plugin for Gatsby. Um, so, uh, literally at build time, it'll be an API request to WordPress.com or whatever it's hosted, and it'll pull in all of your, all of your data from there. Um, and then infer it, infer it. So you'll have to you know, build all your React components, um, definitely, probably from scratch, I'd say, um, and build all the, all, the, all the GraphQL queries that are going to query that data, but the data itself can stay in WordPress. Um, so that definitely makes it easier. Yeah. So you could build it in parallel. Yep. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, if the data is changing in WordPress, then that's, that's different. Um, but if your content is in WordPress, then, then that's going to be fine. Okay. If you have a highly dynamic site, um, like the, like this seems to be very tailored towards optimizing a static appearance. But if you had a highly dynamic site that had a, 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 a static sub section on it, would there be a good implementation there where you could use Gatsby for some core component um, in there? You could, but I'd actually go the other way. Oh, right. I'd be, I'd build the whole thing in Gatsby, mm. and then there's nothing to stop this running purely dynamically once it started. Um, there's a really good um, other talk that's been done recently, um, oh, which, which is by a guy, <coughs> Jason, I should have put this up, um, but uh, Jason Wegenstorff, I don't know how to say his last name, um, but he's done a lot of uh, great talks on Gatsby, um, and one of them is running Apollo, um, so Apollo is your GraphQL um, server that you're connecting to, and so you get to build your static site, um, and then once it's hydrated in the browser, then it connects to that same Apollo instance, and everything's yeah. live now. Um, so you can do that. Right. Um, it's pretty new, um, but there, there's like Gatsby is, in my opinion, it will kind of become the new Create React app. Like you know, right. there's no reason it can't. Uh, it does all the extra stuff for you. Yeah. Cool. So if you're already using uh, progressive web app stuff, this could apply well. You mean like integrating that code? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say there's a little bit of maybe service worker stuff that you'd have to just double check. Um, but you know, Gatsby's stuff is all namespaced, and uh, I yeah, that's 
thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, but I assume that would be a typical problem. Yeah. Um, the, the documentation, as I said, is quite good. So uh, they've, they've got a lot of these questions before, and there's usually like you know an answer for it on the documentation. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a, sorry. Oh, yeah. uh, I've got three right now. <laughs> uh, well, let's, let's go to Brad. Yeah. Does Gatsby support TypeScript? Uh, yes, it does. There are um, uh, Babel and uh, Webpack um, plugins that you can pull in and it modifies your Webpack configuration before it goes into that step. Um, so yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, um, do you see many people combining this with GitHub pages? It's like for a low traffic site, it would seem like you could easily just generate a static site, GitHub pages, Cloudflare, free, um, yeah. totally. SSL, and then, yeah. Yeah, I'd say the, uh, the, um, that's the biggest kind of free option. Um, and then uh, Netlify and um, uh, all the other CDNs would be like where you go once you want to start doing it, probably. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, GitHub pages, I mean, this works really. I mean, it, it's, it's just static content, yeah, so it works pretty much anyway. I guess there's a browser for the um, schema that it infers. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> He's um, quiet. <laughs> I, I was meant to show that call. Here we go. <clears throat> uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's not this. So has anyone used GraphQL before? Yeah. yeah. It's Anyone who's used GraphQL a lot has probably used it, but it's the default um, kind of uh, site to, to explore your schema. Um, so what I can do here is, so this is running against the Graph Catsby develop process. Um, so that's where it's getting all of its scheme information from. Uh, and if you go to query here, you can literally browse all of the data that was, was pulled in. So here I can see that uh, in Mark and Remark, um, we've got this Remark connection object that it returns, which has edges and a node. And then inside there, we've got the raw Markdown body, we've got the file it came from, the HTML, um, sorry, I might be able to read that. Um, but, uh, and the result of that is that I can write um, queries here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Do you think you can full screen and plus plus? Command plus uh, plus? Just for us blind people. Thank you. Sweet. Trying to the like you. <laughs> uh, all right, so <laughs> I can't. <laughs> all right, so if I go to uh, all file, oh, so oh, yeah, thanks. Um, so there's autocomplete, um, and this is nothing to do with Gatsby, by the way. This is a, a completely other project called GraphQL, but um, this is an example of what having a, a schema query language specification gives you. People can build these tools, and it all interoperates with your with your site. So, all file. Uh, within that, I want to get um, this is a kind of like relay inspired um, thing where you can get like you know collections of, of nodes. Um, but inside that, I'm going to ask for the absolute path of the file. Um, but you know what? I'm also going to ask for the the child markdown, which is part of that, and then I'm going to get the front matter. And title. And so just like that, I've got been able to test the query, see all the data that I get back, and when I'm ready, I can copy that query into my source code um, and use that for my components. Um, so that I think that's really nice. Like it, it's ex exploration, um, yeah, it's it's good. Yeah. Cool, we should probably wrap up. <laughs> um, thanks. Yeah.